When NBA players talk about the toughest opponents they've had to face, they often bring up legendary players who are unguardable against everyone. Obviously, these all-time greats get a lot of praise because they are a household name, but I want to show you only 10 NBA legends sharing their toughest matchups and who gave them the most trouble when they were at their peak. Surprisingly, these legends will reveal players that despite their dominance, they struggle against or could never quite figure out. Some of these players might be the most unexpected names you would never even think of. So number 10, we got Stephen Curry, the greatest shooter in NBA history. Only a handful of players gave Curry a hard time, and that is expected when you can drain shots from almost anywhere past half court, which makes defenders work hard to contain him. As soon as he crosses half court, his opponents have to guard him, and even without the ball, he is dangerous. He's so good at moving without the ball that you must always keep an eye on him. Normal defenses do not work on him. But there is one player that will always frustrate Curry. Drew Holiday, Avery Bradley, uh, Tony Allen when he was in the league. Um, I mean, there are guys that have a knack for being in the right place at the right time, being physical, studying your game, knowing your moves. Um, never in my mind are you like scared when you come in and feel like they actually can stop you, but you know, like you're, you guys, you got to work a little harder that particular night or, or play a little smarter or um, even like Pat Bev, you know, some of the antics and stuff like that. Like you kind of have to deal with that. Um, but I think those guys exist and, and that's what they get paid to do is to defend you know, the, the best guys in the league. You feel like you still can get your numbers on them. But uh, Seth Curry is the one that frustrates me the most because he, he, he just has that look like I know what you're going to do. Um, and that game in, uh, in the playoffs, uh, when he was in Portland, they had they like literally like four steals on me. Cause I was, I don't know if he, I, he disarmed me a little bit. Cause he was trying to like, you know, act like we were in the backyard, but he, he literally was everywhere. And I <laughs> couldn't figure it out <laughs> that one little game. The next two legends we got are Allen Iverson and Magic Johnson. Two guards who dominated the NBA by making most of their unique skills and changing the way the game was played around them. Iverson became a culture icon and one of the best scorers in NBA history by scoring without fear. Magic, on the other hand, was one of the best point guards and winners the game has ever seen because of his versatility, vision, and leadership. Both of them had players that will push them to their limits. Oh, Steve gave me, Steve and Stephon Marbury gave me the most problems. Mm. Gave me the most problems. I love Stephon Marbury. Yeah, big bro. Yeah, Steve was just a headache because he could do it. He could do it all without he being fast. Didn't have it. John Stockton <laughs> mode. You know what I mean? Just smart. right here, just smart. You know what I mean? Just know how to get it done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Steve was just Steve was excellent, man. Oh man. I would say uh, you got a couple of them. First of all, Nate McMillan mm -hmm. was Ooh, tough. Wow. Yeah, man, he, he was Nate. tough. Joe Dumars, oh, yeah. tough, man. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen because they rotated the dudes on me. And then um, I would say uh, DJ was the toughest wow. from Boston. Mm -hmm. He was the toughest because he was also big like I am and strong. And last but not least, my boy had to go up against every day in practice, Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper. Cooper. One of the best who's ever played the man. game at defense, man. That boy, he used to beat me up every day in practice. So yeah. those were the guys who gave me the most problems, uh -huh. you know, and uh, – went head to head against. Patrick Ewing and Shaquille O'Neal dominated the NBA through their imposing presence. With his defensive prowess and offensive versatility, Ewing anchored the New York Knicks, making him a formidable two-way player who could alter the game's outcome on both ends of the court. Shaq was a juggernaut because of his size, strength, and athleticism to overpower opponents. He changed how teams defended the paint, but both of them had one guy they could never figure out how to stop. Check it out. Toughest matchup for you during your NBA career? Akeem Olajuwon. How come? Just so athletic? Athletic, quick, the dream shape. If I had the five spot, I'm going to go with Akeem Olajuwon. Because for me, uh, I know I was coming in and I was emerging slash already emerged. <laughs> 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 he was the only guy that I couldn't figure out. I couldn't figure him out. And he was the only guy that, that I couldn't intimidate. Akeem to me is, is number one. But why couldn't you break him? Because I couldn't get into his head. I remember one time I gave him a bow. And he just laughed. <laughs> nice, nice, nice elbow, brother. And then he came out and gave me a <laughs> and, and shot a crazy fedor. Yeah, he gave me one of them. So 
So the next time I, I, I came down, I dunked on him and I looked at him in. Like, okay, good one. And he just came out, you shoot. And he gave it to me again. So he was, he was my favorite. Gary Payton, known as the glove for his tenacious defense, was a point guard who could lock down the best offensive players while scoring on the other end. His unmatched ability to pressure the ball and his basketball IQ made him a nightmare for opposing guards. Kevin Garnett brought that same energy to the power forward position. His defense and ability to score from anywhere on the court allowed him to control games on both ends. But the matchups they're about to mention got the best of him. We've talked about your toughest matchup. Mm -hmm being John Stockton, right? because you said he was so smart. What, right. what was it about him in a game situation that you just couldn't put your finger on as a defender? The first beginning when I started playing against him, and I told Zeke this all the time, I, I hate that I, I didn't get to play against him or Magic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I only had two seasons against them, and they were at the tail end of their, their thing. So he, John was really the one that down was taking over everything. And what it was, I used to always go into games thinking that I was going to psych everybody out. I was going to talk crazy to everybody and tell them. He wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't even look at me. You know what I'm saying? So I think we were so silly and we were so dumb that we knew the, the, the um, film on him. We kept saying he was dirty, but we knew what he was going to do. And when he did, did it, we let him do it like a dumb dumb. You know what I'm saying? So every time I got the ball on him and I post him up and I bag him in, he'll fall. Referees mm. to give him an offensive foul. So then I start getting smart. So I start saying, well, okay, let me face him up. Let me face him up now and see what he does. So I start killing him. Then Jerry Sloan gets, gets, gets uh, uh, smart, and then he starts putting Byron Russell on ah. me. So he puts a bigger man on me, and then he rests John, and then I got to guard John, and I'm tired. <laughs> now I'm, I'm already <laughs> blown out because I got to stay in the game for the Sonics. Right. And so all of a sudden, he coming down, and he's got all his legs. He's only playing 34 minutes. And I look up, he got 26, 16, eight rebounds, five steals. And I'm like, man, he done killed me again. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. He done killed me again. But it was just that 94 feet, I had to check him because, you know, he's going to throw passes. Mm -hmm. Him and Carl Malone's going to come off that pick. He's going to throw. He's going to dime it every time. He's going to come and, and sneak off you and get a steal. He's going to hit a jump shot. Then he go to the free throw line. He shoot nine free throws. He made eight of nine. Mm. So you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then he only shoots 12 times. And what did he do? He made 12. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So right. he's so efficient that I said, man, I just can't take my eye off this dude. And when he get in the game, I got to play him. And I just start telling my coach, let me go out when he go out so I can be rested. Right? I want to know who is your toughest matchup. Oh, man. Rasheed Wallace. Yeah. Rasheed you Wallace was tough. toughest for me because I'm using length body. And if I had to say if I switch out on a smaller guard, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. going to play spoon from a, from a touch. Look at this. This is the room I can, I can adjust. Yeah. When I play, when I play she and he turned and faced me, she looked like he was <laughs> not <laughs> even <laughs> ready. Ball up here, you oh, ain't nobody. Right. And I couldn't block it. I could right. not block it. And I was sitting here. I'll tell you this. The more I watched film and he brought it towards his chin, I had a chance to swipe. So I started right. swiping up. When he took it around, only thing I had to think of is make him put on the floor. Because once he got off, I couldn't block it. Right. So I would try to be him the spots, make him spin, contest hard. If he got me in foul trouble, I hated it. And then his energy. I had to match his energy. Him and Timmy was probably the toughest for me. Kobe and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You would think these two legends destroyed every matchup they went against with their two unstoppable moves, the fadeaway and the skyhook. But both of them shared many players who gave them the most trouble. Listen to how Kobe breaks down his toughest matchup. It shows how even the most dominant players had to continuously adapt and evolve their game to maintain their edge over players. Best challenge that I had uh playing uh, professional basketball, probably the guys that uh, made me work hardest was probably uh, Nate Thurman and Bob Lanier. Mm. Nate Thurman kind of gets lost in the shuffle in terms of talking about centers from that era. Great defensive center, yeah. tall, agile, understood how to play defense. A lot of guys beat on me and said they played good defense. He actually did it. He made, he made me earn my points. Who's the toughest guy you ever played against? Toughest guy I ever played against. Depends. It, it's uh, I can go by I can go by errors actually. So <laughs> so uh, there's a, there's a stretch. There I didn't where, ask you guys. I asked him. <laughs> it, there there was a stretch where uh, Allen Iverson was just really. I mean he was. 
He was a load to deal with, man. He was really, really tough. And there was a game where he dropped 44 on me in Philadelphia. There was a game in New Jersey where Marbury dropped 50 on me. There was a game where Arenas had 60. Uh, Carmelo, 70. Carmelo Anthony is always tough for me to deal with. You know, Durant's always tough uh, to deal with. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys, but the guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tracy McGrady, about man. The... Tracy McGrady with his, you know, he, he had all the skills and all the athleticism, um, but he was 6'9", and he was really, really tough to figure out. And now, the last legend we have is Michael Jordan. You will never hear Jordan having a tough matchup. It was always a tough team that Jordan had to go against. But an individual? No. He will always destroy a play one-on-one. -on -one. But there is one legend on the Pistons that he will always give props to, and that made it challenging for him every night. You will get to see how much they respect each other. It's honestly eye-opening. He thought well. I mean, he was very smart about his defenses. I think he approaches the game as trying to dissect his opponents and try to find weaknesses or try to force them to do things that they didn't feel comfortable doing. You know, and he introduced know, certain tricks to, to make me you know, expand on my talents as an offensive player. I mean, uh, that's why I consider him the best. Loose and you can have fun while you're here, and it's great being here. But when it's time to step on the floor, it's all business and. Uh, it's not fun and games anymore. It's a war. This competitive thing uh, clicks in that you know you look for all the weaknesses of the, uh, of the defense that's playing you, and uh, you look uh, to break him down uh, somehow, mentally, physically. It doesn't make a difference. I'm looking to destroy my defensive man. Fourth quarter. Here's Jordan left baseline drive to the top. Oh, that was every time he's on the floor. Uh, you become consumed by Michael Jordan. You become consumed that he's out there. When you make a mistake, it's not even a question of whether or not you're going to get burned. You're burned already. Michael against Dumars on the drive in the lane. In deep, shoots off the glass, breaks it in. Ninety-five percent of the plays are for Michael Jordan, and the other five percent end up in his hand anyway. Well, you kind of block that out, really. You know that everybody's going to try to keep you from getting involved in you. Go extra hard to try to get the ball. If someone's going to try to keep you from shooting it, you do whatever it takes to get the shot off or get it to the open man so that you get the basket. When I get the ball, I have total confidence that he can't guard me. So I have that edge. Uh, another edge is that I know where I want to go. He doesn't. So he can only guess. Being a defensive player, when you're out there by yourself and there's no help, and it's just you and that guy, it really gives you a charge then because you know it's just you and him. and. Somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose. It's not gonna be any in between. The most challenging moment for me is when they've isolated and my man has the ball and it's just he and I out front or he and I on the wing. What happens is uh, it's, it's almost scary because you almost know the moves before the guy's gonna do it. You anticipate and, uh, and the guy's there and you've trapped him or whatever, you've stopped him. Uh, you can definitely get on a, a defensive role as well as an offensive role or showmanship, if you want to say it, of two people who has tremendous creativity and you never know exactly what's going to happen next. And that's something that inspires everybody. And it certainly inspires me when I'm playing against him. You know, that he and I matched up against each other for 14 straight years. Um, in those 14 years, never once did he try to trash talk me and never once did I try to trash talk him. Listen, let, I'll say this to you, Dan. There were nights that on the court that he would, he would do something so incredible. And my thing was to never show any emotion <laughs> one way or the other, whether he did something great or not. But I can tell you many a nights I ran back down the court after he's done something incredible. And internally I'm saying, are you effing kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, in my mind, I'm I'm like running like stoic, nothing on my face. But in my mind, I'm saying, there's no damn way that guy just did that. Man. So, uh, no, no, incredible. And I always gave him that respect. I always, always showed him tremendous respect. He showed me respect. And so it was, it was mutual on both sides. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me what clip surprised you the most. So make sure you like, share, subscribe. And until next time.